Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to build this exciting rock, paper, scissor game. So let me show you a demo how it works. So all we have to do is we have to click on the S button. It will start the game, rock, paper, scissor. And there you go. So I had the paper and the AI generated a rock. That's why player one got one point. So let's do it again, rock, paper, scissor. And this time I lost the point because the AI had a rock and I had the scissor. So let's try that again, rock, paper, scissor. So I have a paper and the AI had a scissor. So again, I lost. So that's not a very good start. Let me try to win some. So rock, paper, scissor. And again, uh, today is not my day, it seems. So rock, paper, scissor. Okay, I give up. So this is the basic idea for this game. It's very exciting. So this will be our project for today. So we will go step by step, write the code from scratch. So stay tuned. We will also provide you with all the graphics so you can build this uh, by yourself and everything is provided for free on our CV Zone platform. You can uh, go and download all these files for free. Link in the description below and let's get started. This video is sponsored by ClearML. Do you want to know how machine learning and computer vision are done in the industry? Well, we all love running experiments and notebooks to learn really fast. But when solving problems in the real world, things tend to get really complicated, but that just means there's more to learn. ClearML, an open source toolbox, will help you bridge the gap between learning and actually deploying your projects in a way that's scalable to thousands of users. If you love machine learning and are looking to make real impact with your skills, you can get started for free in 10 minutes. Check out ClearML and let them help you take your projects to the next level. If you would like to level up your computer vision skills, do check out our premium courses that are available on our CVZone platform. Links are in the description. So without further ado, let's get started. So here we are in our PyCharm project and as usual we are going to go to our settings and we are going to install the packages. Now before we start we have named the project rock paper scissor and we are going to go to the interpreter and add and here we are going to add the CV zone package. Wait where is the V CV zone? Yeah there you go. So we will install the CV zone package and then we also need to install media pipe, which is the Google package uh, for hand tracking that we will be needing for our hand to be tracked. So that is the initial idea. So now that the installation is done, we have our main.py. So we are going to start from there. We are going to remove all of this and we are going to start typing um, our packages. So we'll import CV2, which is the OpenCV package, and then we will also import CV zone. And what else do we need? So, so far, I think that should be enough. Uh, the first thing we have to do is to open up our webcam. So we write the code for that. Uh, we will write cap cap equals CV2 dot video capture, video capture. And we are going to give in the ID number zero, which I believe is the camera ID that I have attached right now. And then we are going to write here while true, and we will write image, and then we will write success and image equals cb2 dot cap dot read. And that should give us the image and the success boolean. And what else do we need? We need cv2 dot weight key. And we will give it the value of one, which will give it a delay of one millisecond. And we also need to write cv2 dot I am show. And we will give in the name. So let's say it's called image. And then we'll just print out the image that we have received in the previous line. So let's run that and see if it works so that we can go to the second part which we will discuss later on. So there is the image that we are getting. I can move my hand and you can see that. So let's go ahead and stop it and we can move on to the next part. 
Now, what exactly is the next part? We need to bring in our image, which is the background of our game. And based on that, we can add our webcam into it. We can add the score. We can add what exactly is the image that we're getting uh, as the rock, paper, or scissor. So all these things we need to have in our resources folder. So what we will do is we will create a new folder. Uh, it's called directory over here. And we will call it resources. And within this resources folder, we are going to drag all the images that we need. So I have these images over here and um, I was testing a few of them. So let's just keep it BG, which means background. And then we will also add the three images. I, I will show you just now what exactly are we talking about. But for now, let's just paste them in. And there you go. So here we have these three images. Let's check them out one by one. So image one is your rock. It's the image for rock and uh, it has a transparency at the background. So if you want these images, all you have to do is go to our website and uh, the CV Zone platform and you can download these images from there. All you have to do is you have to sign in. If you haven't uh, already register, register, sign up, and then you can download these for free. There is no charge for these. So uh, we have the first image, which is rock. The second image, which is paper. And the third image is our scissor. So these are the three images that we need, uh, which will represent the hand of the AI. So, and the, and the other one, what we need is the background image. And here we have the rock, paper, scissor. And uh, this is the portion for AI. So the images we will add here. And then the player video we are going to add here. So we are going to crop the image. Uh, we will squeeze it. No, no, we'll not squeeze it. We will crop it actually, yeah. And then we'll push it in here so that uh, this will be the player side and this will be the AI side. And in between, we'll have the timer. So all of this can be designed very easily. I used Canva for this. Uh, you can use whatever software you want. You can design it your own way. So let's go ahead and import this image. Once we have this image, uh, we can add and remove things from it. So let's go ahead and do that. So we will write here, let's call it image BG equals CV2 dot IM read. And what exactly are we trying to read? We are going to read from the resources and within the, okay, I didn't spell it right, resources. And within the resources, we have bg.png. So bg.png. So now normally you would put this outside the while loop. But in our case, we have to put it inside the while loop. And the reason for that is that if we put something on it, it will remain. For example, uh, we need to put one of these images whenever we play a hand, we need to put this image on the background image. Now, next time in the next iteration, this image will remain on that uh, main image, on the background image. And that is not what we want. We want to update the complete image every single frame so that we can decide when to add and when to remove the images. So for that reason, we need to put it inside the while loop. So here we are going to update it. It's a little inefficient, but it doesn't really uh, make a difference in this case. So this will give us our background image. And what we can do is, so for now we can just show both of them and we will write here bg and we are going to show the image bg so let's run that and we will get two images this time and there you go so this is uh, 1280 by 720 so it's hd it's not full hd if you want you can make it full hd as well and now what we will do is we will take this and we will put it inside this area so that um it, it looks uh, looks like it's part of the game. Um, so that is our next step. Okay, so how can we do that? First of all, we need to know what is the size of our capture device. So we will make sure that it is exactly the same whether you are using a laptop or a computer or a webcam, whatever you are using, uh, we need to have the same pixel size. So we are going to write here uh, cap dot set we want to set the property number three, which is the width, and we will set it to 640. And then we are going to copy that and paste it here. 
and prop id number four which is the height we are going to set it to uh what should we set it to? 480 okay so now what we need to do is we need to crop it so we know that the width is more so what we will do is we will crop it in the middle we don't want to crop it from the side so we start from zero and we end at some point actually we need to check what is the size of this so um what what exactly is the size of this box so let me check that i had written it somewhere okay so the first thing we need to do is to make this of the same size we need to scale it down so right now both values are bigger than the box so let me actually check what the box is what the size of the box is so let's open it in explorer so if you are on windows you can simply go to paints or you can write uh, you can go to edit and from edit you can look at the pixel values here so in the corner it's showing uh, 795 and then here it's showing 1193 so 7 so if we open up the calculator so what was the value 1193 minus 795 so it will give us 398 so probably it's 400 so when i was designing uh, i made the width 400 and let's check the height so here if we start the value is 233 and here it is 653 so 653 minus 233 will give you 420 so we have uh, 400 in the width and 420 in the height so that's the size of our uh, image so what we need to do is right now our image is 640 by 480 so it's bigger than both of these so right now if we put our image it will be like this some somewhat like this so first of all we need to scale it down so that it is of the same height so the height is the same like this once the height is same we can remove the sides uh, that that we don't want we can crop these area and then we will get the center image and the end result will be something like this so there are two steps the first one is to scale it down and the second one is to crop the region so the first one let's go ahead and do that so here we are going to write image scaled and we will write cv2 dot scale uh, not scale resize resize and we will give in the image we want to resize which is image um no it's not image background my bad so we need to put it up here and we'll go back and this so this is the image that we want to resize so we'll write here image and then uh, do we give it specific pixel number uh, no we don't give that so we will write here zero and zero and then for the output image we will write none and for the scale so i calculated the the values so it was 480 so let me just show you uh wait yeah it was 480 the the height should be 480 but right now it is 420 so what we can do is we can divide it so 420 divided by 480 that will give you 0 0.88 or 0 0.875 so here we will write 0 0.875 and then 0 0.875 so this will squeeze it down uh, it will scale it down to what actually we need so instead of uh, just showing the image we will also show the image scaled so let's copy that and we are going to paste it here and we will write scaled scaled there you go so let's go ahead and run it so now we should have three images so let's go ahead and check them out
okay there you go so this is the scaled one and this is the original one so it's, it's not a very big difference but there is a small difference uh, that you can see so now what we can do is let's just tally it over here so if i put this you can see that it is almost the same height as what we require and what we need to do now is if we put it here like that we just need to crop it from the sides so that um, it is of the same size now if you were designing and you don't want to do this part you can actually make it a little bit bigger uh, this region the actual image so that you don't have to crop but in this case we are going to crop it and we will call it uh, what should we call it so no we don't need to create a new image what we will do is we will put it on the image background right so image background at what values are we changing so we are starting so let's go down uh, first of all we need to scale it my bad so we will write here image scaled sorry we need to crop it so we will write image scaled equals image scaled and how do we crop because image is just a matrix we just need to tell it use pixels from this value to this value and that's it so if we use our calculator again oh i wrote it there let me just open that calculator and over here if we use so uh, our width is 640 multiplied by 0 0.875 so that's our width it's 560 and what exactly do we have we have 400 so we will subtract 400 from this and we'll get 160 so we will divide it by 2 and then we get the value of 80 so we will start from 0 and we will go till 80 that's the whole idea so let's see so here in the height we are not going to change anything the first parameter is the height and the second one is the width so we will start the width at 80 and then we will end it we are going to end it whatever the value was minus 80 so what was the value i, I believe 560 where is the history yeah it was 560 so it will become 480 so let's see if that worked there you go so if i put that in here now it's exactly what we want so if i am in the center is going to be the same but uh, again uh, we don't want to crop it from the edge we want to crop it from the center that's why we are using these values so it's 80 and 480 so that's good now what we need to do is we need to take this image scaled and we need to put it on the background image so let's go ahead and do that so it's very easy again it's a matrix so you will tell that take the background matrix and take the new matrix and take that values and put it in the background image so it might seem difficult but it's very easy so we'll put image background background at what values are we going to replace uh, equals image scaled so we want to put image scaled at these values starting from here till that point so the first value will be the height and the second value will be the width so now uh, these values you can check again from paint so if we undo all of this and we check the pixel values here it is 796 and 234 so wait no okay seven uh, what was it 796 and 234 796 was the width so 796 will be the starting point and the height will be 234 that will be the starting height and then at the end we will check and it is 1194 and 652 so it will be 119494 and 652 will be the maximum height so let's run that and see uh, if we are heading in the right direction
okay so we are getting an error because you cannot put just random values uh, when you are trying to add one image onto another when you're overlapping it it has to be exactly the same size so here our original image is 420 uh, by 400 and the the pixel values that we have provided are 418 by 398 so it is lacking two pixels on each side so here we are starting at 234 and we are ending at 652 so let's just uh, decrease one from here and we will increase one from here and then we'll do the same from here it's 76 so we'll make it uh, uh sorry 96 it will make it 95 and 94 will make it 95. so that will give us two more pixels in the width and two more pixels in the height so there you go if we push it back and there you go so it is exactly wait is it <laughs> okay i think it's mis missing a little bit we can maybe push it down a little bit because there is one white line here uh, which which might be because of the pixels so here um, we can push it down let's make it 34 and let's make it 54 so that will push it a little bit down and hopefully that will uh, solve our problem of that white line. Yes, it did. So now it is exactly in the right position. And here we have our hand and it's moving. It's real time. Um, even if I push this down, I can move this around. I can come to the center and play the game. And that's all good. So we have so far done a few parts where we added the webcam, then we added the background, then we scaled the image, then we overlaid our webcam image onto our background image so that we can uh, we don't have to have a separate webcam image all the time. We can see it through our game itself. Now, the next part will be to add the uh, what do you call hand tracking so that for that we will require cv zone package so we will write here from cv zone uh, dot hand tracking module import hand detector and we will create a detector detector equals hand detector and in the hand detector we can define the maximum number of hands so the maximum number of hands that we want are one we don't want more than one hands and the confidence value by default i believe it's 0 0.5 and we can keep it that way so that will detect the that will create the detector and once we have the image uh, in fact once we have the scaled image i believe it will be better to use the scaled image or if you want you can use the original image as well but it will be better if you use the scaled image so here we are going to say uh, let's say find find hands and we are going to write here if i forgot let me actually change the hand detector so if we uh, if we press the control button and we uh, right click or left click our mouse then it will take us to the actual code and here i have given some examples so def main will give you the example code and here you can see it says hands image detector dot find hands and there you go so we will copy that we will come to our find hands and we'll paste it so it is hands image detector dot find hands and we will use it on image scaled so actually we have to do it before we before we put it on the background otherwise it will not show us the result so let's run that and hopefully we will have it on the image scaled Okay, so this is a new error that has been showing up uh, from MediaPipe. So once you install that, it tells you to downgrade uh, Protobuf. So all you have to do is you have to go to File and you have to go to Settings. And here in the Interpreter, you will see Protobuf and uh, select that and select the version 3.2.0. Uh, there you go and then just install that so hopefully this will not give us that error again so done done and let's run that again yeah 
and there we have it. So this is our image. And if I bring in my hand, you can see now it's showing me that this is my right hand and it is showing me all the points, the joints of my fingers. And now what we have to do is we have to check how many fingers are up. Based on that, we can decide whether it's a rock, whether it's a scissor or whether it's a paper. So that's how simple it is. So let's stop that. And what we can do is uh, we can write here that if hands are detected, then get the first hand. So we will write hand, hand equals hands at zero. So that will be our main hand. And from that, we can use to find our fingers. So we'll write here detector dot find hands, uh, fingers up. We want to see how many fingers are up. And we will give in the hand. So we want to find how many fingers are up of this hand. That's what we are saying. And we will return it into a variable called fingers. So that's the idea. And then we can simply print and we can write fingers. And let's run that. So that, that will give us uh, an array of five values. So each value represents a finger. So here you can see these are the values. And if I bring in my hand, all five fingers are up. If I put my thumb down, it goes zero, pinky finger, ring finger, middle finger, and index finger. All of them up, all of them down. So this will be rock. So we will check when it's zero, 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 it will be rock. When two of them are up, index and middle, it will be scissor. And when all of them are up, then it will be paper. So that's the basic idea. It's very simple. The, the idea of the, the, the concept of the game is very simple. That's why the logic behind it and the coding part is fairly simple as well. There's not a lot of complications. So what we can do now is we can remove these parts and we'll just keep the main image, which is our game, and we will keep the rest aside. Okay, so right now, what we need to do is, um, should we add a counter or should we check the fingers? Okay, let's add a counter. So whenever the counter starts, we need to check um, the timer. And based on the timer, uh, we will say rock, paper, scissor, and then it will be three seconds or two seconds, whatever you decide. And then it will uh, generate an AI result and then you will it will take your result and then it will compare by the way you can make this game uh, to be played as uh, a game that you can never win because the ai you can give it like a 10 millisecond delay and it will always win so you cannot win from this game so you can do that too but we, we will make it fun so we don't want to do that okay so what we'll do is we'll add a timer and we need a timer and we also need a flag that will tell us whether we have the result or not so when we start the timer it will start from zero it will go to zero one two three and at three we are going to turn on a flag that state the result and when it states the result we will stop the timer and we'll stop everything else and we will collect the result of the user of the player and we will take the result of the AI and then we will match them. So that's how we will see the result. So we'll write here timer equals zero. So initially it will be zero. Then we will also write state result results equals false. So that is uh, the initial state. So once we find the hands, uh, we will not check whether there are hands or not we will simply start the timer when we start the game actually we need a flag for the game as well so start game equals false so here start game is false so we will say if start game which means when start game is true then check all of this otherwise don't do that but then the question is how exactly are we starting the game we will start it by pressing a key you can start it by uh, some gesture as well but for simplicity we are going to start it with a key so we will write here key 
equals CV2 weight key. And then we will write if our key equals ORD and we use the S key, then we are going to set start game equals true. So we will start the game as soon as we press the S key. So if I run this now, initially, will it show me? Yeah, it will still show me, uh, but it will not show me uh, the output of the console. So over here, it will give me no results. Right now, it will show me the hand, but no result. But if I press the S button, you will see it will it is showing me the fingers now. How many fingers are up? So it means the S key is working for us. And now we can move on to the next part. The next part is the timer. So for the timer, we are going to simply write, um, we, we need to check the state first. If state result is false, it means that we have not reached the end of the timer. So whenever we reach the end of the timer, we will, we will ask it to state the result. So we will make it true. So initially it will be false. So if it is false, then we will update the timer. So timer equals uh, initial time. And over here we will write time dot time minus initial time. We didn't import time. I don't think so. So we need to import it here, import time. And over here it will be time dot time. Init initial time we didn't declare. So this time is not when we started uh, our game. It is when we press the S key and the actual game started, not when we opened the game first time. So here we will write, uh, here we will write initial time equals uh, time dot time. So then it will keep giving us this timer. And what we can do is we can put it in a text so that we can see. So cv2 dot cv2 dot put text and we need to give in image background and we will write string. We will have to convert it into string because we will first convert it into integer because these values will be really bad. So convert it into integer and then uh, what we will do is we will write down the position. So it will be 605, this I have checked earlier, and 435. So that will be the position. And then we have cv2.font underscore Hershey underscore lane. And why am I doing that? And then we will have uh, the scale and then the color. So 255. 0255 which means purple and the last thing will be our thickness so thickness will put it at 4 so this will give us the value of our timer so let's run that and see if it works so it will only work when we press the s button so whenever the game starts it will start the timer So there you go. So I'll bring in my hand. Even if I don't bring in my hand, it doesn't matter. If I press the S key, there you go. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, but we need to stop it at three. So we don't want to go any further. So what we are going to do is, we are going to write here that um, within this, if timer is greater than three, don't put three, uh, don't put equals three. Maybe equals or greater than three is fine but don't put three equals two because sometimes it, it misses because we are converting it. Uh, it's a floating value, so it might miss it. So you have to be careful about that. So if the timer is greater than three, uh, what we can do is we can write state result equals true. So that way, next time it will not show us the timer. It will stop the timer. And uh, the, the timer, we can put it to zero timer equals zero state result is true and timer equals zero and then it will check the hand and all that and this time it will only check once 
because this will only happen once and then it will stop checking it so let's run that so if I press S one two and three and there you go and it gave us only one value at the end and it is correct because we had all our fingers up and that's why it gave us paper with one 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 so that is the correct direction we are heading in and the next part will be to check what hand are we using okay or we can also do the AI first or should we do the hand okay let's do this first so here what we can do is we can write if fingers equals or double equals zero uh, the first one we will put it at rock uh, why are we putting the first one rock because here the first image one dot png is rock the second one is paper so we will put paper and the third one is scissor so we'll put scissor so using this convention the first one should be rock so for rock it will be all zeros and then uh, let's call it player move okay player move equals one so we said that the rock is one then for the second one it was paper so it will be all of them will be one and in that case the value will be two because at the end we are going to match these two values if this image equals two uh, with the player move then we will say okay um, it's it's tie nothing happened and based on that we'll change value so I, I will show you later on what that means okay so then we will copy that again and we will paste it by the way a uh, uh, trick to copy if you are on windows you can press window and v and that will give you the history of your clipboard uh, if you have activated it if you are on pycharm you can press Control shift and v and that will also give you the history uh, within pycharm so you can click on that and it will paste it so sometimes we copy and then copy again and it copies an empty line and it's frustrating and in that case you can press Control shift v and then you can paste so here we need a uh, scissor so we'll put zero one one zero zero and then this will be player move number three so these are the three values so now what we can do is we can print the player move so whenever the timer ends we need to print what the player played was it one two three and then we will tell you that with our ai uh, generated image so let's see how that goes let's open that up i'll press the s button and uh, th this time it should be paper so it's giving us two let's check what is two if we click on two it is paper so that means we are good to go so this is for the player part now we need to do the ai part so ai part is is very simple it's it's nothing complicated so um we need to import an image so we have these images three of these images so we need to import that and we need to put it on our image the background image so first thing we will write here image ai equals uh, cv2 dot im read and we need to read from the resources actually let's write an f string because one of the values will be a variable so we will write here f and then resources slash one dot png so right now we will just use the first image and later on we will randomize it so this will give us the image ai and then we need to overlay this image on our background image at a specific position so how do we do that where is that specific position we will use the cv zone cv zone dot overlay png function here you have to give in the front image uh, the background image so it will be image background and the front image which will be image ai and then you give in the location that's how simple it is so the location will be 149 and 310 
and we will put it back in image background. So this time around, it will always give us the rock because that's the hard coded value. But uh, once we see that it is working fine, we are going to put it in a dynamic manner so that it can randomize all these values. So let's wait for it to run and see how it works. And we will check that out. So let's open that up. Uh, let's put in our hand. So this is, oh, there is an error. What happened? Oh, yes. One very important part I forgot. When you are using the CV zone overlay PNG, you have to import it unchanged. So you have to write here CV2. Otherwise, it will remove the alpha channel and you can't use the PNG part. So CV2, um, I believe it is I am read underscore unchanged. So let's run that. And hopefully this time it will give us the correct value. So let's press the S button, one rock, paper, scissor. Okay, it's a guess. There is an error, okay, no problem. Uh, what does it say? Print player move is not defined. Player move is not defined because um, it's only over here. But we are giving it a value and the hand was present. So why didn't it print? Okay, let's just put it over here. And we'll put it as none in the beginning. So we'll put in our hand. There you go. So you saw that one of them showed up, but it didn't stay. It's uh, it just went away. So that's not good. How can we make it stay? The way we can make it stay is by using it outside. So how do we do that? Over here, we are going to write if state result then we are going to do this part again keep doing it all the time that and that's how simple it is there is nothing fancy about it because this is with a lot of if conditions this will happen only once so here it will happen again and again so we are putting it outside the loop uh, in directly under the while loop so we don't want any what do you call loopings within the loop Uh, by the way, that is called nesting. Here, let's press S and one, two, three, and there you go. So if I had the paper and the AI had the PNG, which is rock, then it means I won. So that's the idea. And then what we can do is we can make it generic uh, or let's call it dynamic. So to make it dynamic, we need a random number. So we will write here that our random number equals rand random dot rand int and the range is from one to three so both of them are inclusive so one is also possible three is also possible and in between we have two so it will give us all three values so we will take that random number and we will put it here within the curly brackets and that's how simple it is now it's dynamic and we can use it everywhere so no we cannot use it everywhere actually it will change the values for us so each time we play it will give us a different answer so whenever we press the s key it should start the game it will take the initial time by the way the spellings are wrong initial initial time so let's change that where is it initial time okay so also we need to change the result so state result we need to put false state result equals false so now it will actually reset the whole thing 
and uh, it, it will repeat again and again. So now we can check with the timer that whether the game is working properly or not. So let's go here. We'll press S. Let's put rock this time and it give it gave us paper. We'll press S again and the image went away. And now it gave us scissor. We'll press S again. Let's put paper and it gave us rock. So each time it is giving us a different value. So here, let's put that and it's giving us that value. So again, that is good. But now we need to tell who won. So we need to check whether the player won or whether the AI won. And based on that, we need to put the score over here. So let's, let's put the score first so that uh, we can see whether it's working or not. And then we can later on uh, put the logic. So to put the text, we will go down at the very end, or let's, let's go up first, and we are going to declare the score. So scores equal zero and zero. So the first one is for AI, and the second one is for the player. So we're just putting it in one variable so that it's easier to manage. And then at the end of the day, before we show the image background, we need to put these. So we can simply copy the text part, the put text, and we can paste it here. And we can make a few changes. So we need two text. We'll put it on the image background. We will not show the timer. We will show the scores at zero. And we will show the scores at one. Actually, it's already integer, so we don't need to convert it into integer. So we can remove that. Um, and then uh, these values will change. So the first one will be 410. And this one will be 215. And then this one will be 1112. And this one will be 215 as well. And then uh, for the scale, it will be 4, 4, 4, and 4. For the thickness, it will be 6, 6. Again, you can change it based on your liking. So there you go. Oh, we didn't change the color. So let's change the color to white. So we'll put 255, 255, and 255. So let's run that. Okay, so there you go. So now you can see the score on the right and on the left. And uh, once we win or lose, it will add the score. So for losing, we are not going to do anything. We'll just add it to the other person. Uh, for winning, we will add one point each time. So how do we do that? So it's very simple. Once we have the player move, and once we have the random number, we need to match them. If both of them are same, or not same, actually, we need to check which one is which. And based on that, we can tell whether the player won or the AI won. So let's start with the player. So we will write here when player wins. So we will write an if statement. So we will say that if player move equals one and the random number equals what? So if one, one is rock. You will win with the rock if the finger is scissors, right? So if the value is three, then you will win. So you will write this as the first condition or we'll go to the next line so it's easier to read. What happened there? Did I copy it wrong? Okay, let's just remove that. And we'll push this back a little bit. And there you go. So player move is when it's two, when you have paper, then the move should be one. So it should be rock. And the last one, we will remove or. And we are going to write when player move, let's put it together. When player move is three, 
which is scissors, then the answer should be paper for the player to win. If that is the case, then we will write scores at one plus equals one. So it will add to the score. We can remove this part for the print move. So it will add to the player score. So the same thing we will do for the AI. So when AI wins, so we'll just put it opposite. So we'll put this as three and we'll put this as one. This one will become one and this one will become two and this one will become two and this one will become three. And then for AI scores at zero plus one. There you go. So if we run this now, it will give us the scores. Um, based on whether we won or not. So if I press the S button, uh, rock, paper, scissor. So nobody won, so there is no change. Let's play again, rock, paper, scissor. So this time I had the scissor and the AI had the paper. So that's why player one, we have one point. Then let's play again rock paper scissor so nothing again rock paper scissor so again i had uh, paper and the uh, ai had rock so uh, we won let's try to lose again rock so we won uh, let's try to lose and there you go so now the ai got one point and this tells us that our system is working properly so did we miss anything so far? I, I think that is pretty much it. Now, if you wanted to uh, show the result as well, okay, the player won one point, uh, the AI won one point or something like that, you can do that. And based on this, you can always make the AI win. So uh, you can check what did the player uh, put. And then based on that, instead of a random number, you can decide the opposite, the winning number for that. And that is kind of a cheating, uh, but again, if you wanted to do that, you can do that as well. So this is it uh, for our game. I hope you have learned something new. It is a very uh, exciting and playable game. You can change your own designs. You can add stuff to it, some background music, um, some buttons and UI design, and you can even export it to a game. So if you want to learn all of that, we have a course that will teach you how to create all these games on a professional level with buttons, UI, animations, and all that. So this is a somewhat of a basic idea, but over there, we will take it to the next step. We will even use physics, and that is, of course, a paid course. If you want to take your programming skills for gaming to the next level, uh, that is a perfect way to go because there's a, not a lot of uh, tutorials out there that are related to game and computer vision. So you might get computer vision uh, separate tutorials, gaming tutorials separately, but uh, there's only one course that combines them both and we provide that in our series on platform. So this is it for today's video. I hope you have learned something new. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you loved it, share it with your friends and comment below what would you like to see next and I will see you in the next one.